but um gonna do this and then this thing is in the jaranga this way that is always talking to you this puma pitina before i start uh there's something that mina when i started acting i think i started it about uh, i was 11 years old and I'm sure about it, but I'm sure it's a matter of time to get to the Because I learned a lot from that man. Uh, he doesn't know it very much. Because he's the one who introduced me to, to acting. I was 11 and I was, we were watching a movie called uh, Lean on Me. I was going to buy it in with Morgan Freeman. And in that film, it's about a black man who wants to change his community. And in that community, it's a school. And that school, it's run by Ama gangs. And my father was a teacher at the time, and he was going through the same exact thing. And he saw that he needed a change. And I saw him watching this film, what it did, the story. You know, after watching that film, my father, to become a principal. And he became the principal of the school. And he, he tried his best. He tried. And that's when I realized the power of storytelling. Not even the excellent acting from Morgan Freeman, but it was the power of how that story went. And throughout my life, my father has been teaching me a lot about uh, black consciousness, making me watch films like Malcolm X, and there's a speech there by Malcolm X, and he says, I think you'll understand, sir, that there will come a time when the black man will wake up and become intellectually independent enough to think for themselves, as other humans are intellectually enough to think for themselves. Then the black man will think like a black man. He will feel for other black people. And this type of thinking and feeling will cause other black people to stick together and it will end the brutality that's inflicted upon black people by black people. And throughout my life, my father has been teaching me this. But and every time I'm we feel him now, it's like, but he's, he was doing something to me all the time. You know, and then when I was 11 years old, I did a play at primary. And um, I didn't like the play because it was always, every time we did plays, there was always the little white boy who would get the lead and I'll be at the back. I said, oh, no, 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 <laughs> I've always pushed that, which is starting. Even when I studied at DUT, every time they asked me to do a play, I'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah. He's studying, Nala. <laughs> and I never did any play unless I was the lead. And then years later, I was like, no. By the time I reach 30 years old, I'll be in the film, I'll make my first film, I'll be in my film, so he's studying with Philip. And throughout the years, uh, you know, I said it's a uh, Shaga Marine wearing those costumes, just, you know, uh, the word hustle, you know. We did that, but I understood that it wasn't for me every time. I don't look and push and get pumped, get pumped. Because my father always said, there's three things you gotta live by. And those three things is where you come from, where you are, and where you're going. Because I know where I come from. It's my father who taught me all the time. Would he know, who is starting when? Keep pushing. And then I did class act, I won class act. Thanks to you guys for voting. And then I was 30 years old when I did that film. Because I knew, I saw it. I said, before I, before I reached it, I'll make a film. And I did it when I was 30 years old. And my film is out now, Inna Bana, but I don't know if you've seen it. <laughs> but that's the thing, that's been my journey, you know. I know where I come from, I know I am now. But now it's about where I want to be. And to get there, I need, you have to have goals, you have to have a dream, and you have to die for it. And I know that. 
you know, and it, it, I think Lale no no bang o you know, you need a team. That's why I associate myself with Um Gabadi. Because he has the same dream about black excellence, about being the best. Because I remember Gisafunda at DUT, they, they ask you, why do you want to act? Why do you want to do this? I always say, no, I want to be the best. There's no other thing, there's no other way. Why am I doing this? I want to be the best in everything that I do. And I want to do it more than anything else. I want to tell South African stories. I've always had a problem with Americans telling our stories. Mm-hmm. Even that, I mean, I'm grateful for uh, Isbaya, I'm grateful for Tepi Pushers, but they're all controlled by white people. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's those actors with Isbaya who, who have to struggle every day to just construct what has been written down, guess, guess, must keep, must keep it, but keep it up. And it's, it's a lot of work, you know, because you gotta, in Mondays, you gotta think, oh, it's long, it's long, and then you have to translate it in Zulu. And then after you translate it in Zulu, we translate it more buen as we want, because acting requires all those levels. It's not just how often the scripts are in a lab, since you act. It, it's, a, it's a personal journey with whatever Uzbusis is going through right now. You know, it's a personal journey, and you gotta always invest yourself into it. Knowing why you're doing this in the first place is very important. I'm doing this, I know I'm doing it. I'm doing this for the prestige of the black race to, to, to tell our stories. And I'm sure Mkabai did it, Nai Ai. We are Ibe and Nai. I don't think there's anything else that we can say that hasn't been said, you know. Um, I think we all try to say the same thing, just expressing it differently. Um, I'll give you just a brief history on how I started. Now, Konotimina, Mkalewule Industry Lead was not necessarily by choice. Uh, I spoke of purpose, right? And um, I, I look at it that way. I hated it. All day. I was very young, I was very young. I think I was right about six, six, seven, eight. Um, it wasn't until I started theater when I was 12, that I realized why am I doing it? And why do I need to carry on doing it? Um, personally, I mean, So, there was no other way of living and expressing that except through this medium. Um, I tried sports, I was not bad. That was not that bad. Uh, uh, I've, I've, I've tried everything else, and yes, I, it could have worked. I mean, I could have pursued other dreams, but I knew for sure it's because I want to express myself and I express what I see in front of me, my people, what I live through every day. I have to do it through this medium called art. Um, it was not about being on TV. Uh, in fact, I didn't want to be on TV in the first place. Um, I just wanted to express myself, and then through this journey, this medium of theater and storytelling came about. And as I carried on discovering myself, expressing the world, expressing myself, there's another personal thing that happened to me, is that why did my mother, you know, make me want to do this? And more than anything else, more than anything else that she believes in me and, you know, and she wants the best for me, is that you know? So I had to understand that it is beyond me. It is for my family, you know? Um, so that's when I took it personally. That's when I took it to a point that, okay, 
maybe someone else's life would be changed here, not just me. And that's that, that basically what happened. You know, there was a few changes in Tini, but one thing I didn't expect is to change other people's lives. I didn't expect that. You know, I've been by a figure in Bamboo's hotel. Um, last, I mean, I was doing the being, being shoot, uh, shoot up so uh, we were in Pretoria. I think in England, I discovered less than the good level of net of foot last year. In Grand Jane and Club Book, grade nine, grade ten. So as a faggy uniform, my fellow no mamma, my fellow no mamma, and Jalo, a bank, and I would ask as a clue, madam. So I was wondering, like a phone, I don't know, his call looks as you know. Um, and this kid was crying, and he was just saying, I watch you, and you know, and I want to be like you. Just simply that, you know, changes the whole perspective of what you do and why you're doing it. Um, anyway, after high school, I went to varsity. I quit in two months. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm not, I'm not going to say you guys must quit university. I'm not going to say that. No. It's just that I understood that, um, as I said, you know, different people here are speaking. Uh, you're not going to understand everyone, but someone out of these people will understand, right? So there's basically different ways to get to the same place. And I understood that very early. People who are very good in varsity, in acting and in being told how to act, and explaining that I wasn't good in that. I was good in just doing it. I just wanted to do it. My own jail and I, and then I got confused, you know? So I realized that my best way to learn was through practical experience. Um, not being told about it. So I left at the theater, I left varsity. My mom, let's cut this, kind of like, ooh. I left varsity at the theater, and I met people in the industry, and I was in the film and television industry, which I am now. Um, but what I really want to talk about today is when I was looking outside, I didn't know when I got there, it's going to be totally different. I didn't know that those people didn't own anything. I didn't know those people were working so hard um, just to be forgotten and not to have anything in their name. Yeah, but, so it didn't take me long to realize that there's this huge gap between the people who create the work and the people who said it. Um, and it's the system that we grew up in, you know, we're thinking that it's the right way to go. You know, we are actors, we are pity, that's all right. But I realized that in order to truly, truly express your creativity, you need to own it. You have to own it. You have to control the creativity, otherwise it belongs to someone else, you see? So, um, I understood that, okay, fine, in order for my ideas to come to, to, to manifest, it has to start with a mindset of being an individual and being independent. Many of our artists are sad that they depend on, because of this gap, and, and I don't blame them, you know, because this is what we've been taught. Uh, then there's people who own a channel, the people who distribute the work, um, and then there's the workers. You know, we've been taught that, not anything. As a lot of people said, we've been taught to get a job, you know. Um, so a lot of artists uh, can never really create, I mean, really, really, really own their own work, which is sad. You know, so that's what we're trying to break, because we see, we identify the problem, and that is the problem. Um, now, one of the ways to do that, as I said, is to understand that the mindset of, of going for auditions, or filumutu taxis, that it doesn't work. You have to create the job yourself, and then from there, see what you're going to do with it. You know, there is no other way, otherwise the industry will forever belong to the other people and not us. And what's funny is that, all this content, or through entertainment, or through art and, and music and whatever it is, it's black content, all of it. Even the white content, it's adapted from our stories, changed to satisfy their people. So, we will always provide this gold and resources 
for them to sell it back to us. And, and we can't carry on like that, you know? Um, so that's one of the ways, is for us to really educate ourselves on independency and how do we then do it ourselves. Uh, and another way that I, I, I truly believe in is the way of co-independence. Um, and co-independence is what the servants is on. That's all there is. You know, we spoke about how other races, honestly, whether it be Jews, Indians, Asians, uh, whatever it is, and they know how to work together, you know? Um, and I think like it's gonna be impossible for us as black people to work together if we're not independent within ourselves first. You know, we can't see seek co-independence if we're still dependent on our bosses. You know, if we're still dependent on, on, on the job. You know, um, we saw what happened with, as well with, um, with our fellow colleagues from from generations and such and so peace that okay what happens when the boss says you're all fired um, now everybody needs to hunt for a job you know so we want to break that where we can bridge build a bridge whereby the artist somehow distributes or some or at least has some sort of control or copyright over their work you know and that is through co-independency through a cohesive system <laughs> That, that, that works, you know, a cohesive system that does not only rely on one person, right, that can stretch up to different industries. For example, if we look at a spa, for example, spa, we pick and pay, there's different products in spa. You know what I mean? Kone Glover, Gukona, Coke, Gukona, you know, Gukona Masimba Chips, Gukona Ini In. The reason why spa is being spa is because of those other industries that come in you know, holding it. And that's how I see um, this, new, this new innovative way of thinking in terms of our industry. How can then your industry, work with our industry in the media? How can we then both benefit, um, even though we, we're in different industries, but we are dealing with people, right? That's the common thing, we're dealing with people. So how do we grab these people? There's no one who doesn't like entertainment. There's no one who's not touched by the media in some way, you know? Um, so it's, it's understanding how then do we build those bridges that can build, you know, provincial, um, continental, you know, and globally, in fact, uh, as black people too. And, um, you know, to be honest with you, there's, 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 it's, it's, it's really about getting the team right. We need that team. You know, you can't do it yourselves. You need to understand that. You really need your team. And it's about really finding an innovative way to market ourselves directly to our people. You know, I mean, when you in Nicola, for example, like my boy, we are a movie, we are a movie, we popcorn, we are a girlfriend, you realize that actually going for a movie is like 150 rand to 200 rand. That's right. You know what I mean? So it, it, it literally just cuts off our people like that. So we need to find an innovative marketing way. How do we then directly go to our people? You know? And not having them pay, pay, and I'm in a leg to watch a movie. You know what I mean? I mean, there's places where they don't have cinemas. You know, that's why people don't even know South African movies, because that culture is not installed directly to the people. So we are looking for those innovative ways to market ourselves into, into the people that we're selling the product to. And the internet is doing wonders, people. And for me, that is, that's really the revolution of where the industry should go. The reason why I say that is because all these channels are owned by white people. And these channels distribute our work to the other countries but the artist will never know that. The artist will never get that right, you know? I mean, we've got shows that are flighting in, in London or in wherever they fly to. We don't know. Um, it's because we, we, are, we are isolated from that understanding, you see? So I think if we bridge that gap, okay, fine, we can actually distribute our work to our people and think like that, I think then we can have an industry that can grow. Um, I'm only 22 years old. I don't know nothing. And I'm just willing to learn from everybody who's been here on this, on this stage, you know? Um, so the whole idea is for us 
us as the youth, then how do we then take this forward? Most of these people did what they had to do. You know? So it's going to be up to you now, where do you take that? How do we then leap off from this platform and basically use each other and grow and evolve and, you know, into a better society that works together? Um, but Ngabonga, for you guys to listen to me, and I hope and I hope we can all find some sort of cohesive system, as I said, that can help us grow together. Um, thank you.